Social protection was invented to protect us when life events, such as an illness or losing a job, result in a sudden increase in expenses or a loss of income. It offers an escape from poverty and a shield against shocks. It creates more resilient and prosperous societies. Legislating on social protection, however, is not enough. In reality, millions of people, particularly those living in poverty, are left out from the very schemes intended to protect them. This is called the non-take-up of rights. It refers to this gap between rights on paper and rights in practice. Social protection systems that do not address non-take-up are like leaking watering cans. There are huge waste of resources and they miss their target, leaving out those most in need. There are many reasons for non-take-up. One of the main factors is a lack of awareness. People simply don't know about the social protection schemes available to them, whether they qualify or how to apply. Even when they do know, they often face incredibly complex application processes. They may have to provide documentation, such as a birth certificate or proof of income that can be costly or impossible to obtain. Or they may end up discouraged by the many hurdles they must overcome to prove they are eligible. Sometimes it is the fear of stigmatization that prevents people from applying. People in poverty who have experienced humiliating treatment from social services may prefer to avoid any further contact, effectively hiding from public services instead of seeking from them advice and support. And parents are often too afraid to apply for certain benefits because they worry their children may be removed from the home if considered at risk. Similarly, undocumented migrants fearing arrest and deportation, and informal workers, fearing that they will have to pay arrears in taxes and social contributions, are often reluctant to claim much needed benefits even when they are entitled to such benefits by law. It would be wrong, however, to address non-take-up by focusing only on the individual. In fact, non-take-up is the result of social protection schemes designed on the basis of three highly questionable assumptions. The assumption first that people in poverty are to blame for their condition, rather than society as a whole, leading those who seek support to experience shame and stigmatization. The assumption next that social protection should be the bare minimum provided by governments, which leads to social protection schemes being narrowly targeted at those below certain poverty lines denying help to all the others who need it. And the assumption, finally, that social protection is a cost or a burden on public finances, rather than an investment that creates the conditions for more inclusive, resilient economies, benefiting not just people in poverty, but society as a whole. Social protection is a human right, but it is one that will never be fulfilled until non-take-up is addressed. For many who lack the necessary documents, who cannot fill in online forms, or who avoid social services for fear of humiliation, this right will remain theoretical. And while social protection systems will be put in place, poverty and inequality will not recede. Guaranteeing social protection on paper is not enough. We can and must do better.